obviously I already have the frame and everything in here and I'd like to get working on it so we can get it prepped and repaired so that uh, we can start working on the cab so we can well, get a little closer to going back together. Um, so we're going to get the brakes apart and start having a look at some of the suspension stuff. Okay, so, uh, well, you really didn't miss much. I put the truck up on, well, I don't know if I should really call it a truck, it's a frame. Put the frame on stands, and I uh, pulled the tires, and I just took the drums off. And it looks like uh, the brakes were just done before it was parked, because there's anti-seize on the flange, and everything looks really good. Uh, now, I don't know how long the truck was off the road, so at this point, all the parts are here. Which, there's a complete front suspension, rear suspension, minus leaf springs, and all the brakes and steering parts and everything. Uh, so I'm not going to screw around. I'm just going to go ahead and do the brakes. Uh, you know, with bonded shoes, which is what these are, essentially the, the shoe material is is glued to the steel backings so this part here and what happens is sometimes if you get stuff like this it's old or it's got corrosion uh, it looks really good right now I put it all back together and I start driving the truck and the first time I have to make a couple hard stops they heat up and when they heat up they delaminate next thing you know all the all the friction material peels off and gets wedged in here and it ends up destroying the drums. I've seen it quite a few times, unfortunately. Um, so considering I already had the parts sitting here on the shelf, I'm not gonna mess around with them. Plus then it gives me all new brakes all the way around on the truck. So I've done that. Uh, up front here, again, it looks like it just had fresh brakes because everything's, well, pads are new and everything was anti-seized here they were smart enough they actually put anti-seize inside the heads of it so the head of it wouldn't rot so that our uh, 3 8 allen key would actually fit in there so that was kind of nice of them uh, unfortunately i measured out the front rotors and i guess they machined them uh, when they did the brakes and to clean them up again with another cut, they would actually be uh, below the discard thickness. So we're going to have to get a set of front rotors for it. But you know what? All things considered, that's really not that bad. Uh, interestingly enough, the truck's never had ball joints. So it's got 197,000 and they're still riveted in. And honestly, they're still tight. Uh, you know. I'm already here now, so I'm going to replace them. I'm going to replace everything. Because as you can see, all the bushings are dried out and they're all peeling apart. And I'd just rather not give myself any problems later on if I can help it. So we'll go ahead and get it all done now. Okay, so essentially the uh, the front brakes on an S10 are pretty much the same style as all the other GM brakes of the era. Um, when GM was designing these trucks, a lot of the front suspension on these interchanges with uh, the G body. So your Cutlass, your Regal, your Monte Carlo, your Grand Prix. Um, a lot of guys I know actually with modified S10s run the tubular control arms that you can purchase for a G body uh, and they bolt right on so a lot of this stuff interchanges same rotors same bearings same seal same calipers same pads uh, but anyway so to take them off is pretty straightforward you need uh, 3 8 Allen head, right? You can use a socket or a whatever, it doesn't matter. And they uh, I already loosen them off, obviously. They go through 
and they slide through the caliper through the pad and then out to the other end of the caliper here right and they thread into the anchor portion which is part of the spindle now I could probably clean these up and reuse them but I found that Napa had a, a hardware kit that gave you the sleeves that I'll show you later that are inside the caliper and it gave you the pins so and I think it was 14 or 15 bucks so it's not even worth my time to clean everything up right it's out so tight because what we're going to do is and I might end up I'll make it a separate video just because it'll be a little more in depth um, we're going to rebuild these calipers I can buy new ones but I can also buy caliper kits and I don't mind rebuilding calipers so with those out of the way, we can come in here with a pry bar and just kind of kitty corner it and that'll be our caliper off. Alright, so like I said, the brakes are like new, I just don't know how old they are and I don't know a whole lot about their condition. So rather than mess around with them, we're not gonna. Now I do see that these ones are riveted, so in theory they wouldn't come apart on us, but still I would prefer not to take any chances if I could help it. Now in terms of taking the rotors off these trucks, what you gotta do here is you gotta pull the dust cap off and then we'll pull the cotter pin out and take the little retainer off and then we'll back the spindle nut off and we can slide the whole rotor off as an assembly. So let's get some tools for that. Okay, so same deal on this side. We're just going to take the pins out of here. And I'll pry it off. One pin. Two pins. Here's our other caliper off. Take our pads out of here. Like I said, they're like brand new, but I don't know how old they are. So I just assume not run into any problems. Look, well, there's a dead earwig. <laughs> Piece of the backing plate. That's why we're gonna replace those. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see because the axle shaft's there. Um, but I'll try and illustrate it a little better when uh, we get it apart here. And in the meantime, hopefully, kind of get the idea of what we're doing here. I'll show it on the bench anyway. So we're going to come in here and we're going to detach some of our primary return springs up top here. So there's the one side off. Take that out of there. Now on this side, you'll see it comes up into here. So what we're going to do is come in here and hopefully we can get this arm to pop off there like that. There you go. So the arm we're going to reuse, the spring we're not. So we need this piece. And this part is just scrap. And that means that the top of the shoes now are not attached. Right? So we're going to need the equalizer. And 
And when we get to that point, we're going to need the brake strut that goes here. What we're going to do is we're going to take the hold down springs off. See, usually you put your finger on the back side of it, put a little pressure in the front of the spring, and it comes out. majority of this off there we go so that would sit like that and this part here that just fell on the floor uh, it will go into here like so All right so we'll move that out of our way for now and we may or may not need that one spring and usually, now I cut the park brake cables and stuff off this truck, but you have to try and get that out of there. This is all scrap, as you can see, because we have all new park brake cables to go on it, too. So this will have to get cleaned up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a handful of parts off to be sandblasted. Um, it's just a lot nicer to work with clean stuff. <laughs> so, take these two pins out, and we'll push this through. Which we'll have to get those two uh, little bits of retaining tongue out of there. And then all this, well, we'll take the wheel cylinder off too. But then all this will get cleaned up. And when we paint the rear end, we'll paint the backing plates. And then before we go to put it back together, we'll clean up the flanges. And that'll be everything ready to go back together. Okay. Removal of the wheel cylinder is pretty easy. It's retained by just a clip, which chances are the clip that retains them is probably rotten all the hell on yours too. So all I do is pop it with a pry bar, but you have to take off the, the pivot to get it out of there. So it's a uh, 21 mil, and I have a feeling that it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be tight is okay. Just have to get a bigger bar. There we go. So, assuming it's only going to rotate so far. Nope. All right. I need a wrench too. Big as that. Yeah, it's like a 15 16 so. Might be a 21, but 15 16th is going to work today. I bring my torches down from my parents' place. So what we're gonna do here is we are gonna now we got it loosened a bit. Here's the retaining ring that holds the, the wheel cylinder. We're gonna take and we're gonna spray that full of penetrating fluid. Tighten it up a little bit and back off again. Because I have a feeling this hasn't been off in a while. Because I don't think they did wheel cylinders the last time the brakes were done on this truck, judging by the amount of crust on them. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Now we'll back it off again. There we go. Welcome to the rust belt. So that's going to go get sandblasted too. Here we go. The pivot removed. Oh, there's our old wheel cylinder. All right. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to go ahead and get off while I'm here working uh, are the rear shock absorbers, because obviously you can see that one's rotten and leaking, and this one's leaking. So what we're going to do is... Um, the top is held on with a 13 millimeter, so both the, the nut and the bolt are both 13 millimeter hex. So we're going to go ahead and run them off, and then we'll go to the bottom there and take the nut and washer off, and we should be able to pull these out. Okay, that's everything undone from the shocks. Now we can go ahead and pop them off there. Grab a pry bar. And just kind of get my good shove. other one off. Okay, let's get the other shock off. So a good shock should be hard to compress. And first thing you notice is the bushings are completely shot. 
right? There's deteriorated both ends. Right? It's a little too easy to compress. Same for this one. And it doesn't rebound. So these are garbage. Okay, so that's going to be a bit of a task, I guess. We're going to go ahead and repair uh, the frame. So I got the rear end out of the truck. Um, not too surprisingly, all the bolts are seized in the bushings. So I ended up just cutting them. And I just cut the front hangers because at the end of the day, we're going to end up replacing where the hangers are anyway. So we're not going to use these ones. And then I can just push that bushing out and that'll pop out that what's left of the bolt anyway. So we're going to go ahead and fix this because this is concerning. <laughs> um, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to drag out the other chunk of frame and I'm just going to mark a few things so I can get an idea of what I have, what we're going to use, where we're going to cut. Um, so far I've gone ahead and I've measured everything and marked my measurements so that we have a reference. Alright, so here's where we're at. For whatever reason, I thought the camera was recording and, well, it wasn't. So, my screw up. So, there's the old chunk of frame rail out. Um, I'll have to cut off this body mount and transfer it over to the new one. But there's our new piece of frame in. So like I mentioned, I zed it in on both ends. And then if I step over the frame here to the inside, I also took and I fish plated over top of where the seam is. And my theory is if it's good enough for class 5 to class 8 over the road trucks, and trailers well then it's probably okay for a 2600 pound s10 now i've uh, taken a measure and made sure that all my measurements still match up and they do so there's no reason that this shouldn't be square so i still have a small uh, area to repair on that side i'll probably do that tomorrow and then I think what we're going to do is we're going to pop bushings in the springs here. Uh, because once I do that, I can temporarily hang the rear end back in the truck if I need to get the frame out or whatever. Anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll actually probably have a second video for you this week. Um, we're going to rebuild the calipers for this truck. Um, I've got one of them back from being blasted and I've primed it and put a coat of paint on it. So now we can uh, actually get to the rebuilding portion of it now. So I'll have that video up probably midweek. And then next weekend we'll have another S10 video. So it's going to be a good week. We got a whole lot of new parts to put on the truck. So, anyway, thanks for uh, joining us again, and we'll catch you next week.